Well, here at the Fundamental Rights Agency, uh, we've been looking at this for the past two and a half years, uh, and we've published a production called The Ten Keys for Effective Communication. What we're interested in right now, though, is getting beyond what we published. So we had two really ins inspirational days, but inspiration is really not enough. People realized the urgency out there, and they really mandated us, and we mandated them back, you know, all of us, to take it seriously, get our acts together, because only then we can really address those urgencies. It's really important when we communicate on human rights that we tell stories. In order to tell an effective story, uh, you really have to think about the human aspect of it. And uh, journalists love to get human stories. If you start talking about standards and all the rest without putting the human story into what you are saying, you, you are failing. And I think once you start really breaking it down and really looking at individual people, it starts to feel relatable, right? Because at that point, you could say, you know, wow, that I, I can imagine that happening to me. And not just sort of make a general message that we hope will land, but really make a specific uh, message and talk to uh, specific uh, communities. That we have to have a needs-based segmentation, so we segment by looking at the needs of the target groups. And then once we've figured out sort of the advocacy strategy around it and hone in on what we call like our four T's, who are the target, the tactic, the tone, and the timing. Empathy is a basic element of human decency in doing our work. So what we have to do is we have to convince more people that human rights are important and that's why we have to diversify and not just preach to the choir. And to be able to uh, offer a narrative, a pro-human rights narrative that is audible, understandable and that touches people's minds and hearts. Look, we live in a media society which means uh, attention is really, really low. <laughs> Make it short, accurate, not complicated. It's really painting images for people that, that stick with them. That things need to be short and simple and to speak to people in an accessible way. Keep away from um, jargon or abstract terms. You need to be able to say your message in one picture and five words. That's all you get. People aren't sharing the, um, the news stories, the data, the statistics. What they might share is something that's reflective of themselves. Yeah, I think there's a revolution going on uh, globally in, uh, in terms of the media landscapes. It means that we as communication professionals uh, need to be more and more creative to get messages across. Um, we keep coming back to the notion that we're trying to sell vegetables in a world of candy. Think about communication as an integrated formula. So of course the visual is our strongest sense and this is where we communicate most of information. There's so much evidence that feeling good it is a political act and that actually we need to make people feel good to achieve our goals. Communicating, for example, climate change, it's just necessary to be positive. <laughs> what we definitely try to do is also to show positive impacts, that, that's for sure. We are constantly trying to find the positive um, because one of the things that we were set up to do was to um, rework the narrative around human rights, which is fundamentally negative. Who is your audience? Like, who are they? And what is the action that you want them to take? Because I think sometimes that also dictates how am I going to communicate with them? We need to change the approach from communicating to someone to communicating with someone. So authenticity of how the message is, what the message is, how it's developed, and who it comes from really matters. A relationship allows you to have a very focused, targeted message that you know will resonate with that person because it's established on trust. We are actually all working for the same cause. We're trying to build the same world. And it's so good that we actually start doing it together. It just makes sense to try to join forces in where we can.
to really be on the forefront, you have to experiment. You have to create new types of content and see what works. So we try to find ways to combine arts and human rights. People who might not be into that institutional level, we, this can be a very good option to, to use um, arts or film. You need to understand that social media is not an amplifier of your message. It's a means of having a thousand one-to-one -one conversations at once. It's not necessary to have a real communication expert, but you have to include your colleagues. And it's crucial for everyone to do it. It's not just the work of one or two guys who work in communications departments. There are a lot of organizations out there that don't have the means to have, they don't have a massive communication budget and they don't have the means to run big campaigns. So the Fras 10 Keys are extremely helpful. Since finding out about the 10 Keys, I've actually been recommending it to organizations and I will definitely keep doing so because I think it distills the uh, elements that you need to make effective uh, content online. We published a report called 10 Keys. It's time to identify the 11th. One key that's preoccupying us right now is the key not of talking, but of listening. In other words, to be effective communicators, we have to do a much better job of listening and understanding the other, so that we can build the bond, the relationship, the bridge to the other person on the basis of which we can convince.